Hello everybody, I finally got to make a new video. Take a look at what we have this time. So there's the Earth, uh, the interesting place we all live in. You can see a bunch of planes rotating around the Earth, and you should probably put the video in full screen to fully appreciate those. Uh, you can rotate the scene, obviously, that's pretty cool. But most importantly, take a look at what happens as soon as I move my mouse to the left. And then back to the right. Yes, there is a full... I don't know if I can call it a day and night cycle. I think that the moon and the sun, they don't behave like that, but it's, it's probably close enough. And it's an interesting idea. I wanted to explore it for a long time. And you could use it, for example, when you have like two buttons on your web page, one on the left and one on the right, and you want to trigger like a wow action when the user hovers over those buttons, or you could use it as a team changer, uh, a very expensive one in terms of GPU resources, but nonetheless, it will look super cool. So I think it will be worth it. Uh, all in all, I think that it's, a simple enough project that we can show it off in a few videos and I hope that you will enjoy it. I definitely had a lot of fun building this so yeah uh, we should probably get started shall we? We're going to use our usual super simple setup no bundlers no npm commands we can immediately go ahead and create an index.html file and once we have that we can add a bit of boilerplate Okay, let me walk you through what we have here. We just have two divs. They are full screen divs because they're absolutely positioned and they cover the old screen. They are basically the backgrounds of our, of our scene and they are co coded as linear gradients. So we have the sun background, which is going to be fully opaque um, as soon as the page starts and the moon background is that is going to be hidden. Uh, then we also have this property. So as soon as 3JS is going to inject the canvas on the screen, we have to give it a position. Otherwise, it's going to appear behind these two divs. So we want to make sure that the canvas appears in front of the background. So we have to give it a position of relative in this case. Um, once we have that, we can go ahead and make our index file. There we go. And the beauty about unbundled development is, just, is that we can download all of our dependencies with a single import statement that only specifies the link from Skypack. So in this case, we are using 3.js version 137 and we're ready to go basically. As always, we'll need a scene, a camera and a renderer. So for the camera, I'll remind you, this first argument is the field of view of the camera. This is the aspect ratio of the screen. The um, near and far plane of the camera, as in what's the distance of the closest object that can be rendered and what's the distance of the furthest object from the scene that can be rendered. We're also positioning the camera a little bit above and, and further away from the center of the screen. And then we're making a render with a property that we haven't seen in the, in the other videos, which is, which is alpha equals true. So with this property, when a pixel is not opaque, it is going to show through the HTML elements that are behind the canvas. For us, in this case, it's going to be the sun and the moon background. That's why this property is so important. Then we're making the render full screen here, and we are enabling the shadow maps. And finally, we're appending the canvas on the um, DOM of the page. Now, if you watch the other videos, you probably know what I'm doing by now. I'm making a self invoke um, a sync function. This is going to be useful later. And then I'm setting the render loop. So the render loop is this function right here. This function will be executed by 3JS every frame. So every time the monitor refreshes, this function is going to get executed. Hopefully 60 frames per second. Now I'm creating a directional light. This is going to be our sunlight. The color is going to be a bright white and the intensity of this light is going to be 3.5. I'm positioning it on the top right side of the screen and I'm setting cast shadow to true. We want this light to cast shadows. All these properties are related to the um, shadow camera of the, of the directional light. This is basically just the, uh, the width and the eighth of the shadow map texture. So if your shadows are not as high, high quality as you would like to, you should increase this number. And you should probably use a multiple of two. This, this is what internally TrueJS uses. As far as these properties go, for now, ignore them. I'll let you know in a moment what they mean and why they're used. The next step will be to create a sphere and to add it to the scene. Like that. And don't be like me, please. I always forget to import these constants. So if you go here, everything is missing. I'm going to add all of them. I need to add this one, this one, etc. So yeah, don't forget to add those. Otherwise, the project won't work. 
There we go, now we can finally render something. Let's go inside the render loop function and let's add our render statement. I hope you won't be surprised if I tell you that I'm a total idiot. The name of the function is not set render loop, it's set animation loop. Sorry about that, I have no idea how I invented a new function in Tree.js. Anyway, once we have that, we can save the file and then we can run index.html with a local server. I'm using an extension for VS Code that's called Live Server, and I'm just right clicking and clicking open with Live Server and it should show up the project in the browser. All right, this looks pretty awful, but if you see this, it means that it works. Now, the sphere is at the bottom of the scene because the camera is looking up. It's not looking at the center of the um, of the scene. So the next thing that we're going to add to the project is uh, the controls that will um, give us the ability of moving the scene around. So let's do that next. To add the controls, we have to import a new file. So please do that with this link. And after we have that, we can instantiate the orbit control class like that. This is going to give us an object that we can use to move the scene around. So the target of the controls is going to be the center of the scene. And these two values will be used to basically smoothen out the rotation when we are moving the scene around. And the last step is to update the controls before we render the scene, like that. And if all went well, now you can probably rotate the scene around and the camera is going to look at the center of the sphere. Now I'll move the sphere initialization inside the async function, like that. And now we need some textures. You can find the textures that, I using, that I'm using for this project here. You will need now these free textures and the link is this one. I'll paste it in the um, description of the video. And once we have these free textures, we'll make a new folder on the project and we're going to import the textures in our Tree.js project. I'm placing everything inside an assets folder uh, and that's all we need really. Here we're loading our textures and, that, and that's why the async function was so useful because it's very convenient to use a weight in this case and load all of our textures synchronously inside this um, variable here. Next step is going to modify the material of, of, of the sphere to include these textures. Like that. You can play with these values to change the material of the sphere, but in short, let me try to explain what I'm doing here. So map is the base color of the sphere. Roughness map is a texture that represents how rough the surface of the sphere he is in that particular text. So, uh, bum map is going to be used to effectively to give the impression that the texture has some um, some variation in the perceived height of the surface of the texture. I encourage you to play with this value right here to properly understand what this um, texture is doing. These four values instead are all um, magic numbers. So I basically chose these values exclusively because they looked cool in my in my view. But you can play with those and like change them to something else uh, if you like it more. And that's the result. Now, this is starting to look interesting, but if you notice, it's missing the interesting reflections that we had in the original project. As in, if I rotate the scene around, this side is completely dark, and we don't want that. To fix it, we'll need an environment map. An environment map is a special kind of texture that is going to be used as sort of a light source, as if it, as if it was enclosing your entire scene uh, with that texture and emitting light from it. You can find a lot of interesting environment maps in this website, which is called Polyavon, or you can use the one that I'm using and you can go and download this file right here. Again, I'll post the link of the of this repo in, in the description of the video, but the choice is yours. Polyavon has pretty cool environment maps as well. So if you want to choose one of these, I encourage you to try them out. Otherwise you can use my own here. Once you've downloaded your environment map and you have it in your assets folder, then you'll need to import this file from Skypack because we'll need an RGBE loader to process the environment map. The process itself is pretty simple. You just have to copy these lines. And there's really not much to say about it. There's a, a structure that is called PMRAM generator and it's used to basically process the environment map um, to transform it in a format that can be properly used for tree, with Tree.js. All that these free lines are doing is just getting the environment map from the assets folder and processing it with this structure called PMREM generator. Afterwards, we can immediately use it in our project. 
and there's nothing else that we have to know about these lines. And finally, we can add the environment map to our sphere material, like that. This value is going to determine how strong the environment map effect is, so you can play with this number to your liking. As a last touch for this video, I'm rotating the sphere a little bit such that the other side of the planet is going to be visible first. So yeah, I'm sorry North American folks, uh, in this video you're not going to be the star of the show. Sorry. And there we go, it works. Um, I'll stop the video here, it got way too long, but in the next one hopefully we'll be able to include the rotating planes around the sphere. And yeah, stay tuned for the next one. See you there.